Today we're going to talk about using the Sherline lathe and mill to cut a keyway in a shaft for the gearbox here. But first we'll tell you about the gearbox so you understand what the shaft is actually for. So far, we've already accomplished making a shaft and a keyway on this side for the input side of the gearbox and a handle that consists of a strap, a bolt, and a large dowel that we've turned. This is your input side and this is a 60 to 1 gearbox. The purpose for the gearbox is that 30 years ago approximately, I bought an engine stand, which is good for V8s. It's relatively small and you had to turn it by hand and use a little pin to hold it in place. Not particularly good if I want to do something like a straight six and more importantly, I'm going to be doing some straight eights on it. So I've made it much larger, stronger, and I'm adding this 60 to one gearbox. So you can turn it real easy by hand and it'll put it in any position you want to put it in. So we have the input shaft done. What we're going to do is the output shaft. And on the other side here, as I turn it around, you can see where the output shaft is. And there happens to be a keyway here. That's a quarter inch keyway. So what we're doing is making a shaft for this and with a quarter inch key in it so that we can then hook this to the engine stand rotation mechanism or we're going to rotate our engine. This little collar that's here will be on the opposite end of that shaft and will actually fasten the shaft locked down in there. So that's what that'll be used for. Now just for interest, this particular piece happened to get this off of eBay, and sometimes you can still get a bargain. I got the whole thing for $37.50. The shipping cost more. Um, normally, these things are retailing brand new, around $300 from what I've been finding, when you have to buy them singularly. Um, and this one, here I got brand new. Somebody never used it. So that's what we're going to work on. We're going to work on that shaft. So now we're going to show you the setup for how we're going to cut the keyway for the shaft. All right, here is our setup that we're going to use. We have a Sherline lathe that we put the milling attachment on. We put a riser block in here. And this is the eight position milling attachment. You could be using a straight one because you don't have to do anything but hold this in one position right now. Also, we've got a draw bar. It's a homemade draw bar in here, pulling on a quarter inch collet in which we have mounted our edge finder. And for reference for people to know, this little edge finder, little patented device that works really nice, it jumps and it clicks when it runs into the edge. And you can get it from Fisher Machine Products of Hawthorne, California. Very, very useful little product. And we'll show you how we're going to use that in a moment. Let's talk a little bit more about the setup that we've got here. On the cross slide, I've mounted the Sherline angle plate at exactly 90 degrees, both 90 degrees this way and 90 degrees this way, utilizing a small square and fastening it down. Now you notice we have a lot of cantilever in here. So in order to actually hold this shaft, I am holding it in a four jaw, a fully adjustable chuck that I actually turned it in. Now you'll notice that surface is rough, but if you remember what we we're gonna use it in, this doesn't matter, so I didn't care. All I cared about was the fact that I wanted it to have it slide into the hole in the gearbox. If it needed to be beautiful, then I could have uh, worked for that purpose, but this was just rough cut it down to size, so it's usable. It's nothing you're ever gonna see. That doesn't matter, so that's why rough cut is going on here. Now, before you think it's just held in the jaws here, it's not. It's actually held with a 1-8, one inch, three eighths inch thick extension that was turned on it that is going to go into another piece in the shaft assembly. That part of it was made to look real nice, so it's actually held further in the jaws than it appears to be. So it isn't just out here on the, on the front. That is that main portion of it. Now another thing I'm gonna do here is take a step block hold down setup and end up putting it in here. The reason I want to put that in here is to get a three-way hold down for this. So in just a minute, we'll be back with that and we'll show you how we're going to machine this. 
All right, we have made our change at our step block hold down in here. This gives us at least three points to hold on to this, and it's really quite sturdy what we've set up here, which is going to be necessary because we're going to mill a keyway in the top of that shaft shortly. First, though, we're going to find our edge for it. So we'll bring our shaft past our edge finder. We're going to turn on the mill. Remember, you may have caught that this shouldn't spin at over 1500 RPM. I'm actually spinning at about 230. I have a DRO over here on the side that allows me to see how fast I'm spinning it. I'm going to bring it down with the Z axis so that I get it over to the middle, basically. And I'm going to have to swing around for a moment and see the end of this. All right, now that I've lowered this a little bit more and swung around while we were off camera there for a moment, all I've done is brought this edge finder down to approximately what looks like the middle, looking at the end of it down here, approximately what looks like the middle of it on the side. Over on the DRO, I've set the Z at zero so I know what's going to be correct when I bring it to this side. Now, of course, I could have started on this side and worked the other way, but I happen to have it behind. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bring, using our hand wheel, we're very slowly bring our rod back towards our edge finder. And you may have noticed this is lined up back here now. That's what the edge finder does just before it finds the edge. And when it finds the edge, it's going to make an audible click and smooth to the side. There it is right there. And you can hear the sound and it's moved to the side. That's the edge. So we're going to press and zero our X on the DRO. So we're at zero on the DRO for X. Now we're going to bring it up and we're going to move all the way past it onto the side closest to me. I'm going to go all the way past our shaft. Now we're going to come back down to zero on the z-axis using the DRO over there. So we use the same basic height on both sides. Coming up on it. And there we are at the same height. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bring it to shaft back towards us, which is going to line up our edge finder again as we get close keep bringing it over and there we're getting lined up there it is going off. That's the opposite side of our shaft. Now we're going to shut this off. Over on the DRO, I've got a measurement of 1.184. That's what it's reading, 1.184. What does that really mean? It means it's approximately a one, eight, one inch shaft and that we've got 184 as our centerpiece here. Not really true because we're only on one inch, but that gives you a rough idea. All we have to do is divide 1.184 in half, and that's going to give us our measurement for where we should be in the center of this shaft for our keyway. So 1.184 is 500 plus 92. So 592 is going to be our measurement. So we're going to lift it back up now. Now I'm going to lift it way up because I'm going to have to switch over to a mill bit. So I'm going to go a long way up here. And we're going to rotate our dial and we're going to go over on the DRO until we're at 592. Now I passed it, so I'm going to have to come back. Get rid of the backlash there. 592. For all practical purposes, that's the center line of this piece. Close enough for what we're going to do. And actually, if we had a really good shaft, it, we could dead on hit the center. So the next thing we'll do is we'll switch over to our mill bit. To do that, 
I'm going to take out our edge finder using a Tommy bar and a wrench. We'll loosen the top of this. And this is actually a homemade setup, so I'm not too worried about it. A little bit of tapping there, and it's out. And we've got our edge finder that we'll put away. Always be real careful with the edge finder. You really don't want to drop that. Now we'll switch over to a brand new carbide end mill, quarter inch, that we're going to use for cutting. And we'll put that in our collet. Slide it up in here and start to tighten it up. And you really want to run these in collets instead of running them in a drill chuck. Infinitely better hold on them and they run so much more true. So there we're all set and we're going to come on down. Really all we care about at first is touching off. So when we get close we'll turn on the mill. And we're just going to touch off. Now remember, I warned you, this is a very cantilevered setup. Even though we're tied down well, it's a long way out here. So we're going to take very shallow cuts. Probably no more than five thousandths at a time. Just to make sure that we don't have so much trouble with it being cantilevered. Obviously we're way too slow. I'm going to bring it up to about 800 initially and I'll see what I think of that as we just try to touch off. Okay, that's close enough to where it is. Now one of the things that tends to happen because of the vibration is sometimes a hand wheel will want to move because there is slop in them. I'll sometimes hold those just because of that. And this is the only one that's going to matter because on this machine on our Y-axis, we do have a power drive, which I'll set up and use for back and forth work. So the only thing that's going to matter is just holding the X side of things. And I'm going to hold that. And I've locked down my Z-axis. So each time I lower it, I'll lock it down. And I'm just going to go back and forth and cut this out. Now, since we're going to use a quarter inch keyway, we have to go down approximately 125 thousandths total when we're done. And we can obviously test our keyway. It is not critical, the keyway length for us. That keyway goes all the way through. We don't need to cut it all the way. Now, I'm probably going to cut about four inches of it, which will be fine. Because that's not critical. Just having it on the center and the approximate correct depth is what we're going to be after here. Bring this over here, and we'll set up. And this initial pass will probably do nothing because we're just going to see if we, because we've got not the most perfect surface, we're going to see if we hit any of that. And as you said, it's not the most perfect, so we're hitting in some areas. You'll notice I have enough clearance to come under this portion of our Z-axis. That's somewhat controlling the total net depth that I could possibly do here. Now before we go any further, I'm going to find a little ruler and we're going to get about four inches in here. All right, here we've got a little ruler and a pencil. And then we're going to mark about four inches. All I got to do is have a mark. Remember, I said this is not a critical dimension at all. I'm just going to use the four inches as what I'm going to cut for a keyway. And we'll go back to letting this run across, see if it runs anything else in our initial across. As I come up on where that four inches is, I'm going to hit the DRO and put that as my zero point. So every time I'm working back towards zero when I'm actually making a cut. That's close enough. Now I'm going to zero the y-axis. I'm 
And we're just going to let the unit run back because I always like to cut in one direction, even though technically I'm cutting both directions here. We're going to start from the end each time as I make cuts into this particular shaft. Going to lower this just a couple of thousands initially, and we're going to set it to go back and see how we do. Now I know at first I'm not doing much of anything, but again, because I said the shaft isn't completely smooth. I'm just wanting to knock off anything high and make sure it's gone before I get serious with this cutting. Now we're going along with about two thousands per pass cut, starting to get serious with cutting this. This is going to take some time, but because the cantilever is so heavy on this machine with this, I'm going to run it real slow and accomplish this on a machine that's normally way too small for doing this. measured that before we did the final pass and so I know we have enough depth in there. The area right here we had a chatter problem which was really due to this little z-nut coming undone and not realizing it come undone part way. Now I've had it come undone before and something to really watch for because I don't know why it should be quite such a problem but it does sometimes do that. Now of course this was cantilevered a lot and if I were to do this again, I'd try to come up with some method of getting a V-block under here that was actually supporting this end. Being cantilevered like this, what was going on is you'd have to do three thousandths at a time in depth here. And you'd also have to use about 2100 RPM for the mill bit. And I was using the fastest feed. Now I had to do some experimenting, the fastest feed on my y-axis in order to get that to work out right. I have to take it over to a belt sander and get that really, it's got a burr all along it that's kind of sharp that I've got to get rid of, but it shows that the key will actually work in it nicely, so we're fine with this. And it was a rather interesting little setup to get this done and do a keyway on the Sherline with something that's really quite large for it. We'll look forward to getting another video.